Hello everybody, my name is Finn, and today I will be walking you through how to navigate our OISE Library K-12 Manipulatives collection on Omeka. So, what is the Manipulatives collection? So, this includes anything in our library catalog that is a hands-on um, concrete material resource that OISE students can check out and use in their teaching practica. So this includes anything that is not a traditional text-based resource like a book um, or a media resource like a videotape or an audio recording. This is things like toys, games, puzzles, uh, building blocks, uh, science kits, models, a whole wide range of materials. All of these materials can be found in the curriculum resources se uh, section of the library on the third floor. And all of these can be found by using library search, but it's kind of hard to specifically search for manipulatives in library search, which is why we have this other platform called Omeka, where we have created uh, an additional uh, search tool for you to look up these resources, browse through them, and find things that may be relevant to your teaching practice. So, where is this resource? It is omekaoise.library.utoronto.ca. And here I am on the home page, which looks like this. So, if you're a teacher candidate and you want to browse what we have available, the first thing you would probably want to do is browse by subject. So, if I click browse by subject, I see all of these subject headings and each of these headings is a subject and a strand within that subject. So our subject headings are based on the strands of the one through eight curriculum in Ontario. Now we do have materials that are outside of that range, uh, primary materials and senior materials, uh, but because the names of subjects and strands are not consistent across all ages. Uh, we've gone with the one through eight names uh, just to keep things consistent. So if you're looking in your subject area, you can just scroll down to wherever that is. Let's say I'm teaching health and phys ed. Um, I see some images of the kinds of things we have in each strand. If I click on active living, I get some items that could be easily used in the active living strand of this subject area, right? If I click on an item, I will get some description of it. Sometimes we even link to other resources. Here we have a link to a book that can be used in tandem with this resource. Um, this is a very popular one, the parachute. I can click on the image and I can see a larger image of it and I can click on the catalog entry and I can see the official catalog entry here which will look familiar to you um, if you've used library search before. I also get the call number of the item which is what we can use to locate the item in the library. So that's what you'd want to have handy when you go to the library and if you need assistance finding that item you can give that call number to a library employee and they will be able to help you find that item. Okay, so that's how you browse by subject. Now, what if browsing by subject is not useful to you? You want to um, find something a little more specific. Well, what I can do is I can click on browse items. Now, this just gives me a list of all the items in the collection. Now, that's a lot to look through. You see that we have 732 items here. If I want to narrow that down, I can click on Browse by Tag. When I click on that, I get this field of key terms that items are tagged with. So this can be useful for finding specific types of items other than just the curricular strands. So some of these tags are related to the type of material. So puppets, for instance. We have a huge collection of puppets. If I click this, I see all the puppets that we have in our collection. I can click on puzzles and we get all the puzzles we have in our collection in all the different subject areas and age groups. We also have tags for subjects that are 
um, that don't line up completely with the curriculum subjects. Like, for instance, sex education. That might be in health. It might be in uh, biology and sciences. Well, if I click on that tag, I get all the sex education resources in all subject areas. We also have our tags for age divisions. So each item is tagged with primary, junior, intermediate, or senior uh, as applicable to that particular item. What age group would you most likely use this item with? So you'll see that we have a lot of primary and junior items because there's a lot available for PJ uh, when it comes to manipulatives. But let's say that I'm teaching intermediate and I want to filter through those other items and just see the intermediate items. I can click here and see in all subject areas um, just the items tagged for use with intermediate grades. Now where this gets very useful is where you can combine searching by tag and searching by subject. Now here's the way you do that. If I click on this search tab, I get an advanced search page. The most useful way to use this for this particular collection is to scroll down to search by collection and choose from this drop down what subject and strand you're looking for. So suppose that I am looking for uh, science resources. Maybe I'm looking for earth and space systems, but I only want something for the intermediate age group within that subject area. I can search intermediate in this search by tags field. I click search for items and here I have only the items tagged intermediate within earth and space systems. So now I've narrowed down my search by a lot. If I go back to that page, what I can also do is I can add multiple tags. So let's say I'm looking at life systems this time and I want intermediate resources, but I only want specifically models. I want to see what kinds of models we have when teaching about biology and life systems, but only for intermediate grades. If I separate with a comma, I can search both those tags within this subject heading. And here I have all the items that I might be looking for. Perfect. Now, if I want to see if an item is available, once I find that item, let's say I know exactly what I'm looking for, I can also always use this general search bar up here if I already know the name of the item. If I type it in there, oh, I'm looking for Cubeto. Here it is. Now we're on an item page again, like we were before. We can see the item. We can see the description. But if I go to view the item in the catalog again, that catalog entry is where we're going to see information about what's available. So this particular item, we see somebody else has checked it out. Somebody's already using this. It's on loan. And so I know that it's not available, so I don't have to go in only to find out that it's not currently available. So I think that is about all that I wanted to cover when it comes to the manipulatives collection. Uh, I hope that this has been helpful to you. Um, and please do tell your colleagues, your fellow students, um, that these resources are available to any OISE student. Uh, whether you want to look at manipulatives for research purposes, we do have some materials that we keep around uh, because they might be useful in someone's research, or more importantly, if you want to use them in the classroom, because we have lots of items that we are adding all the time um, that we feel are useful to use during your practicum to plan some really engaging lessons with some concrete materials. Um, so that's it for me. Thank you for listening and watching and happy teaching.